commodity first. Yeah, well, that good stuff. Perfect. Perfect. My name is Hannah Brook. I work with the Cham Henderson Chamber of Commerce. I actually, my office is located here at the Henderson Business Resource Center. I oversee this center. It's our um, incubation, so to speak. So if you're ever looking for office space, please come see me. We actually have one of our offices open. So little uh, housekeeping. Bathrooms are across the hallway through the glass doors. Men's room, second hallway, turn left. It'll be on your right. And women, I'm sorry, you got the height. You got to go all the way down. <laughs> so that should take care of everything. But um, welcome everyone today. We're, we're very excited to have Jeff. 17 years ago this month, yes. you started, he started his company. And as we can see, it has done very well for himself. So welcome and enjoy the presentation. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, by the way, there are a couple of giveaways. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, it's to um, cover up your webcam. Some people are a little nervous about that, right? And uh, also, we have a, a giveaway. If you, if you haven't dropped your business card in, please do. Okay? So, uh, oh, and I also have some other cool, all of our giveaways, except for the pens, are security related. So, Fortinet is the company that we uh, partner with for firewalls and switches and other security type equipment. And the other giveaways I have are security related as well. So, first off, oh, let me tell you a little bit about NetEffect and what we do. So, we are an IT service and support company. Our clients are typically somewhere between 20 and 100 people where they outsource their IT to us in full. We take care of their computer servers, uh, switches, firewalls, data backups, email, end user support, all of it. For larger customers who have in-house IT, we will supplement the in-house IT with product and projects. So we will sell them large Fortinet firewalls and help them implement them. We work with uh, Treasure Island, uh, Brady Industries, Nevada Restaurant Management, some of our larger clients. Um, let's see, the projects. Uh, oh, and also in 2012, we got the state's first ever gaming license granted to an IT service company, and that allows us to work on board regulated IT systems. So, first off, I have very good news for you. I am not a cybersecurity expert. <laughs> this is not the dry, yucky presentation that most people fear when it comes to cybersecurity. Instead, I work in an IT company supporting small and medium sized businesses. So, I see this stuff happen a lot, whether it's one of our customer X gets scanned via email, or customer Y gets infected with ransomware. So I see it all the time. And we work really hard to help our clients protect themselves and help them to be able to recover when an incident occurs. <clears throat> Because cybercrime and cybersecurity is always changing, I'm continually updating this presentation. About once or twice a year, I do a major revamp because things change so much. You are seeing the first of the major revamp that I've done in some time. So if I uh, get a little uh, stumbly here or there, it's because this presentation is, is uh, really new. So with part one of the presentation, we're going to demystify cybercrime. I'm going to explain to you what it is, how prevalent it is, and how it works. I want to teach you to think like a cyber criminal. Because if you can think like a cyber criminal, you are far less likely to become victim to a cyber criminal. And then in part two of the presentation, we're going to talk about the actions that you can take to to significantly minimize your chances of becoming a victim. We're going to talk about strengthening your computer's defenses, avoiding downloading the malware, nasty stuff that will infect your computers, protecting company data, and then I think, having given this many, many times, one of the most important pieces 
is creating and remembering strong passwords. It's one of the most key things and easiest things that you can do. So here's the, uh, the Cliff's Notes on cybercrime. It is a complex, well-organized criminal endeavor with many, many participants. It is a criminal profession, okay? Just like any other profession or discipline, there are different people who have different specialties in different areas, and you're gonna see how that works. Cost of cybercrime is expected to reach six trillion by 2021. And I just saw a conflicting report to this that said 11 and a half trillion. It's immense. Cybercrime is committed offshore or with something called onion routing, I can make it look like it's offshore. So I can be hacking into your computers, your next door neighbor, and make it seem like I'm coming from Russia, China, Kenya, wherever. It's super hard to stop. It's all about the money, and it it's almost never, ever, ever personal. And it can happen to you. Is anybody willing to raise <coughs> their hand if they've been scammed or had a virus infection on their computer? It's super prevalent. So I work in IT every day, and these facts just boggle my mind. So I mentioned that it's uh, damage is uh, <coughs> co the the cost of the damage expected to hit somewhere between six and apparently eleven trillion dollars by 2021. That would make it more profitable than the global trade of all major illegal drugs combined. Pretty big market. Cybersecurity in 2017 was 86 billion dollars, and it's expected to hit one trillion by 2021. Hot, hot market if you're a cybersecurity professional. Cybercrime jobs predicted to reach three and a half million by 2021. And this is so interesting. When I started in IT 20s plus years ago, unless you were a security professional, you didn't really even know much about security. That has changed. Every IT professional has to be very security focused and security aware. There are 3.8 billion internet users, and that's expected to reach 6 billion. So it's even a growing market for the bad guys and girls. Global ransomware damage costs are predicted to exceed 5 billion in 2017, which is a 15 times increase over two years. So one of the biggest things that I've changed in this presentation over the years is up front, I used to spend a lot of time convincing that convincing people that this is a problem. I have waited my presentation because these days it's in the news and people are very aware of the risk and the danger. So over the years, my presentation has gotten far less focused on how prevalent and more on the what you can do to take action. Oh, and two things that I ask everybody in this presentation is think about as we go through this, what action will you take? Knowledge is power, but action is even more powerful. So at the end of the presentation, I'm going to ask people, what, what can, would, would any somebody volunteer to, to say what will they do differently as a result of this information? And secondly, if you get some good value out of it, I ask that you go to Google, log into your Google account, and leave a positive review on Google because it really helps our search rankings. Okay. So, clearly this is a problem. How do we respond to this crazy onslaught of threats? This is the most common approach. This is the common, common approach. Amazing when we talk to medical clients about HIPAA, and doctor, he doesn't, he, he, she doesn't want it. They don't want to hear it. It's, it's amazing how, how prevalent this is. This is the other approach. We often see this in IT. IT people tend to be a little on the paranoid side. So yeah, you can wrap yourself in tin foil and uh, you can be pretty worried and concerned and it can keep you up at night. I prefer a third approach that I recommend to everyone I talk with. 
And that is that if I'm presented with a bear, I don't have to run faster than the bear, I only have to run faster than Bill. <laughs> right? So there's Bill, he's falling down with he's, he's toast. So, and this is my recommendation with both physical security and computer security. So, with my home, okay? I have better bolt locks than my neighbors. I have an alarm system. I don't have any crazy elaborate, you know, um, cameras or trap doors or stuff like that. The same thing goes, as you'll see with cybersecurity, the average person, their password and their approach to, to cybersecurity is horrible. So if you simply do a little bit, you'll be faster than the person next to you. Each year, Verizon publishes their data breach investigations report. So 2018 is their 11th annual report. Some of the most important facts from their report is 58% of data breach victims are small businesses. Health care organizations account for nearly a fourth of all data breaches. Can anybody hypothesize as to why medical? That's where the good stuff is. Yep. Say more. Say again. Why, why is it good stuff? Um, socials, medical info, yep. um, Medicare. Yep. Perfect. You get a pair of firewall socks. <laughs> <laughs> At least 30% of malware hashes appear only once. And this is really important, and this is new. So there are, on average, about 200 new malware variants created every day. Okay? And because cyber crime, right, you've got the good guys, the bad guys, the bad guys come out with some nasty stuff, the good guys come out with a patch. The cyber criminals, as they write this stuff, it's essentially disposable. They write it, they try to use it. If it's successful, great, they use it for a little bit, but they're just, they use, they use these things only once and move on to something else. This is brand new. In the 2018 report, more attackers are moving away from using traditional malware in favor of adopting more evasive fileless techniques. So, if you've ever gotten a virus on your computer, you download a file, the file infects your computer. <coughs> We're now seeing a lot of fileless malware. It simply writes something to the registry. It's amazing. It's very, very evasive, very hard to catch. Ransomware plunged in early, uh, in early 2018 was replaced by crypto mining as the top payload, payload of choice. Now, they don't know if, uh, let me explain crypto mining. So, does everybody know what Bitcoin is? Yeah. Okay. Bitcoin is an anonymous digital currency. With crypto mining, if I can infect your computer in order to hijack your CPU, I can have your computer and 500 more of you mining for Bitcoin. That's crypto mining. So they're doing this as the top payload of choice. So your computer might be helping a criminal generate Bitcoin. So, and the report was really clear. This may not stay this way, but that's the trend that they saw in 18. The average time it took for the first victim to click on a phishing campaign was 16 minutes. Meanwhile, it took 33 minutes on average for a user to report a phishing campaign to IT. Wow. So, it's a problem. So, notable breaches. And again, I have scaled notable breaches down by uh, tremendously to really focus on taking action. <clears throat> so, to your point, follow the money, okay? With cybercrime, it's all about the money. So, I'm sure everybody's aware of the 2017 Equifax breach with 147.9 million consumers ha uh, having been affected. Why is that number important? It affects everybody. Say more. Well, everybody in this room was affected by it. Right. I mean, and so, when everybody's affected by it, what do you do? Yeah, good answer. 
you get a security flying pig. What? <laughs> 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 okay. So, <clears throat> my approach to securing my information is better than average. If I'm caught in that, with LifeLock and two-factor authentication and some other things that I use to protect my stuff, it's unlikely that my information will be exploited for financial gain. But with 148 million, if even 10% or 15% of those are exploitable, that's still a big number, right? This is one of my favorites that most people don't know about. It's called Carbonac. And with Carbonac, ATMs around the world were instructed to dispense cash. So the money mule, so Ellie and I are conspirators in this um, uh, organized crime, right? And I say, all right, Ellie, you can go to this ATM on Water Street on this day at this time, wait for the money. Bring it back because I'm counting it, right? So it's organized crime. <clears throat> the Democratic National Convention during the 2016 presidential election, Macron was hacked, right? I mean, who, who hasn't, it seems, these days been compromised? <clears throat> In March, so almost exactly a year ago, the entire city of Atlanta was compromised by ransomware. Now, if on average, cyber criminals can get three, four hundred dollars from consumers to get their data back, how much do you think it's worth to unlock the entire city of Atlanta? Uh, all the money. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't follow the story after, after this. I watched some of the videos on it. So, as employees walked into City Hall for work, they were handed a printed notice telling them not to use their computers until further notice. 